Replications are annoying and time consuming. So do you really need them? Well, it turns out that your whole project could be a waste of time if you do not include replications and that you'd been better off if you just had flipped a coin. And this video explains why, but it won't end there. I will also show you how to calculate the number of replicates that you really need in less than 30 seconds with the statistical software G power. And even though we're talking about statistical concepts, I will try my my best that you won't notice. When you perform an experiment, there are two possible outcomes. Either you detect an effect or you don't. But can you trust either one observation is true and not a mistake? The thing is, you can't be 100% sure, but, and that is what statistic tells us, you can, for example, be 95% sure. But that means there's always room for error. And in the world of statistics, there are two errors that you can make. If you detect an effect that in reality isn't there, that's a type one error. If you do not detect an effect that in reality is there, that is what is called a type two error. Both errors are annoying and they result from variations in your experience experiment that you cannot control. Let us say you're interested in how the temperature changes the yield of a chemical reaction. You perform an experiment at 80 degrees, which results in a yield of 90%, and you perform a second experiment at 120 degrees, which results in a yield of 93%. You are thrilled and you tell your colleague, but he is a little bit confused and tells you that he kind of performed the same experiment last week and he got the opposite result. So who is right? right and who is wrong. To find out you go to a third colleague and you ask her to repeat the experiment to find out which of the previous observations was the right one. But she observes a yield of 91% for both of the experiments no matter which temperature. What you had there is a type one error. You thought there was an effect of the temperature on the yield but in reality there was not. Often you see results displayed in combination with error bars. The mean of the recorded values is displayed as the result and often the standard deviation is used as error bars. Both values can be easily calculated in Excel or any other software that you want to use. Overlapping error bars means that there is no significant effect even though it might look that way. And if you use the standard deviation as your error bars, you can be 70% sure that you are not making a mistake. Or in other words, the probability of making a type one error is 30%. And even though it is important to know type one errors and error bars do not tell you how many replicates you really need in your experimental design, but the statistical power does. Would you perform an experiment if you'd already know in advance that most likely you will not be able to detect an effect? Or would you test the effect that the temperature has on the yield of a chemical reaction if you'd already know in advance that you will not be able to measure a difference in the yield? Well, I at least would want to do something else with my time. The statistical power is the probability of not performing a type 2 error. Or you could also call it the sensitivity of your experiment. If your statistical power in your experiment is low, you will most likely not be able to measure an effect of the two temperatures. Or only if that effect is extremely large, like for example, if the change in temperature changes the yield by at least 10%. So that means your power should be as high as possible, right? Well, yes, but the power in your experimental design is influenced by the effect size. Will an increase in temperature change the yield by 1% or 10%? By the significance level, which is how sure do you want to be that you're not making a type 1 error? And by the sample size, so how many replicates do you want to include? You can think of power like of a fissure net. It is easier and faster to produce a fissure net with wide gaps, but you can only catch large fish with it. In contrary, it takes a lot of time to produce a fissure net with very small gaps, but you can catch smaller fish with it. The higher the power, the smaller are your gaps in your fissure net. You can capture very small effects, but you also have to do a lot of replicates. So if you want to answer the question, how many replicates you need in your experimental design, you first need to answer the question, what is the smallest effect change that I want to resolve? Are you interested in changes that are as small as 1% or is everything that is below 5% unimportant? 
The smaller the effect you want to capture, the more replicates you need. But you can also ask the question the other way around. I have an X number of resources. I can perform a number of X experiments. What is the effect size that I can capture? And am I happy with that? Let us do an example in G power. First, you need to download the software. I put the link in the video description. It is for free. When you open the software, your window should look something like this. For experimental design, we need to select F tests here in the test family. And the statistical test that we want to perform is ANOVA, fixed effects, special main effects and interaction. The type of power analysis, we have the possibility to either select a priori which means we did not yet perform the experiment and we want to calculate how many replicates we should include. Or if we already performed the experiment and just want to know the statistical power for our experiment, then we can select post hoc. But in this example, we want to know the number of replicates to include in our design. So we select a priori. And now we need to fill in the right parameters for our specific design. Very important, the effect size is the difference that we want to detect divided by the expected standard deviation divided by 2. Let us say that a difference in yield of 1% has a practical relevance. We know from previous trial runs that the standard deviation will be around 0.25%. That means our effect size is equal to 2. The next parameter is the significance level alpha. We talked about it. It is the probability of making a type 1 error. And often people use 5%. So we do that as well. We do not change the parameter here. It means that if the change in temperature will not influence the yield, you have a 95% chance of detecting that. The next parameter is the statistical power or the probability of not making a type 2 error. The standard value here is 80%. It means if the temperature change will increase or decrease the yield by at least 1%, we have an 80% chance of detecting that. The numerator DF is the number of levels that we have minus one. Since we want to measure the temperature at two different levels, for us it is two minus one, so our numerator DF is one. If you would perform the experiment at three different temperatures, then your numerator DF would be two and so on. Number of groups is the number of experiments that you had without any replicates. In our case, our only factor is the temperature at 80 degrees and 120 degrees. That means that the number of groups in our example is two. If you have multiple factors, you can multiply the factor levels of each factor to get to the number of groups. For example, if you also include the pressure at three different levels, then you have two levels for the temperature, three levels for the pressure. That means a total number of six groups. Okay, but for our example, we can hit calculate now. And as the result, we get the total sample size that would be required for our specific experiment. And to know the number of replicates, you need to divide this number by the number of groups, which would equal 2.5, meaning that you should go for a total of three replicates to be safe. But then you can be sure that if the temperature will change the yield by at least 1% with a very high probability, you will be able to detect that. Or in other words, with a very high probability, you will not waste your time. <laughs>